As a kid who grew up at the tail end of the 70s into the 80s, I had access to the best of everything. It was just sitting right there. We had the best cereal. We had the best cartoons, the best bikes. We had the best of everything. You can go to your grandma's house and see relics from... Wow, you can see Art Deco right there in her living room. We had... We still had cues from the atomic age and the space race right there on TV. If, if you're like generation Y and beyond, you don't even know who Count Chocula is. But what a time to be alive. What a time to be inspired. You guys don't even remember when you could simultaneously love and hate the Russians. You don't remember that. But now we have access to something that kind of ties all that stuff together. And I forgot about these guys. And what a cool turn of events that led this thing to be on my bench today. Denny, I'm so pumped about this. This is my favorite amp manufacturer in contemporary times. I mean, this unseats all the giants. Thank you guys for riding along. Don't forget to like, subscribe, the whole thing. Denny. And the rest of you goons and mutants out there, top of the morning to you. What a day. It's It's got to be 8.45 a.m. I haven't even looked. I'm back home. And I'm ready to dig in. Now, Denny, you're telling me that your swart has no swat. Uh, you're telling me that uh, she's breaking up into some harsh mid-range frequencies. There's something going on. Well, what is this? First of all, it's as if you look at the schematic and, and you won't because it doesn't really exist. Uh, but but those of us that have uh, taken a peek inside and, and tried some even cursory um, blueprinting or sketching out um, will quickly realize that we're looking at uh, and in keeping with the whole uh, visual uh, motif. We're we're looking at uh, a blend between the what was arguably the best of the fifties and the sixties here. And and what a lovely package, dude! Come on. It's hard to get excited about new amp manufacturers because uh, you end up realizing that the majority of them or cloners. Uh, the majority of them are just cutting and pasting, painting by numbers. Uh, a lot of them, while uh, mechanically skilled, can't even troubleshoot their own gear because they don't have the chops. They have the ability to look at a layout diagram and to do some research online, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's how I started to. But when you're running a business, uh, things have to change. So, I am sitting before what I believe is one of the most innovative and just inspiring amp manufacturers out there today. That's just one man's opinion. But I'll tell you, um, what you're basically looking at is an old Tweed era amp mated to a tremendously ambient reverb circuit with an incredibly lush uh, tremolo function. Now, um, if, if you kind of poke around through the circuit, um, it, it would be easy for you to assume that, um, well, th this must clearly be, um, it, it's obviously some sort of a tweed variant, some sort of a Fender tweed variant uh, that could run either 6V6s or 6L6s. Right? It would be easy to make some assumptions, but uh, a closer look would would reveal that while uh, while Fender um, does use a cathodine style phase inverter, another company was doing that also, and then they kind of all were. But the the company that I'm referring to is Gibson, and uh, there there are some opinions on this particular amp uh, that it all seems good, um, but the prevailing opinion among the techie types out there is that what you're kind of looking at is a Fender Gibson hybrid. Uh, the, the Gibson 
end of it being more of the like the GA17 RV. But there's some other sauce there. There's a this is a sonic lasagna and that's just a layer of it. I'm incredibly excited to dig into this amp and I'm incredibly excited to have um your trust Denny and also to have you guys kind of following along because um uh, it's kind of sad, the culture these days, where things that are, are popular end up becoming popular due to some astroturfing. It's, it's, it's hardly organic out there. And the things that are astroturfed into existence and into the forefront don't last that long. Once all the attention, the, the five minutes attention uh, that we, we typically give to things online these days and in life in general, we're all looking at our phones just swiping those things don't last um and i i really hope that this company and i haven't followed this company in quite some time but i hope they're doing well out there in north carolina and and i hope more people start finding out about these just tremendously cool i mean if, if you're looking at this amp uh, then you're thinking 50s you're thinking 40s. It's a beautiful thing. Be right back. Okay, so I should start adding a little more context to these videos. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to start rolling in as time permits things that I do uh, off camera. So let's get an as is condition logged in. Noisy strat here. Also, noisy amp. Oh, these tads are noisy. So given the layout, there's an opportunity for um, some of this noise to be induced. But let's see if it's the reverb circuit. Some of it is exacerbated by the re reverb circuit. So with everything off, we're getting some power line hum. So that could be tubes and anything from the phase inverter onto the wall. That's a lot of, that's a lot of opportunities there. So let's just see what's up with this thing. Wow. So let me just say, even with the speaker firing away from me, let me just say this. There's a lot of depth to the sound. Even I'm not even referring to the reverb. It, in this particular room, in this space that I'm performing these little tests in here, in, in my on my bench, it's it's kind of tough to get a good sound out of a lot of combos. It's just. Um, the cabinet construction is really giving this thing a lot of. It's, it's giving this amp a lot of breath and dimension. Just 
on four. So we're going from, I don't know, say 10 o'clock to say two o'clock. <laughs> sounds great with the bridge single coil not a lot of amps play nice with that thing <laughs> set up like this um you're pushing um a, a kind of a wet signal uh, via via reverb into a distorting phase inverter which can lead to some really cool trashy sounds I don't want to fall in love this week. All right, guys, so I might cut the video here because I have some tasks ahead. But let's get her back uh, to operating temperature. Uh, nothing on the input here. And Denny, I'm in love with this damn amp. My God, man. Come on. Oh, I don't want to feel like this. It's so touch sensitive and dynamic. It's it's juicy and spongy and sparkly at the same time. It's like a warm chocolate chip cookie that just came out of your mom's oven. All right, here we are. Um, I'm gonna weave in some. Let me get this little chopstick. I'm going to weave in uh, some footage from a frequency analyzer so we can see what frequency this background noise is sitting at. Now, um, everything's on zero. Let me put my ear down here. We're getting some light uh, power amp hum. It kind of sounds like 60 hertz to me. Um, or, or some of the harmonics could be dulled out and it's really 120. Let's Let's take the tone control and wind it up. There's nothing. Let's take the reverb control. 
wind it up. Dude, honestly, given the proximity of uh, the reverb pan to the transformers and the speaker and this compact package, I'm absolutely shocked. I'm absolutely shocked that there's not more noise out of this reverb circuit. Then, obviously, we'll take the volume up there. That does sound like some 60 hertz to me, but we'll see. Certainly, your 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 power tubes here are um, mechanically noisy. Now, um, I'm gonna have to take this little guy outside of the cab um, we're gonna see how well balanced she is maybe she's not perfectly balanced or maybe something drifted down there inside the chassis and they're not drawing the same amount of current so you're getting some of that the noise from what should be some uh, common mode rejection between a push-pull pair of output tubes that's just it's not happening And I know you said these are all new tubes with the exception of this old Sylvania sitting right there. Probably in a reverb circuit, huh? But uh, we'll check it out. One thing we didn't check out. A little noisy. Pop. Kind of thumpy. Could be the power tubes. So I'll tell you a little. Um, I'll tell you a little something now. What this tells me, and here's something you might not have thought about, guys. Given their silence in between uh, the pulses of, of 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 the trim here, uh, we know that it's it's most likely uh, a, a bias setup. Um, taking the the it's it's intermittently removing uh, conduction from the power tubes and giving us a really sweet silence. So that's telling me that um, that the filter caps are probably not the problem. And why do I, why am I assuming that right now? It's not safe to make assumptions, but actually let me turn it off another way. <clears throat> why am I saying that? Because your reservoir cap is still directly coupled to the output transformer. And if that was bad, then we wouldn't be enjoying that little uh, brief moment of hum-free action there. So anyway, I, I could talk all I like. I, I still need to get this chassis out. So this, this will be part one.